Would you mind introducing yourself? Okay, if I must. Now? Yes, please. Hello, I'm Lady Pandora. I've been a lifestyle disciplinarian for 40 years and a professional one for 20 years. I trained as a BDSM -er 40 years ago with a dominant couple who remained my mentors and dear friends until they passed away about eight years ago, three weeks short of my 18th birthday. I was in a paper shop and there was a chap standing next to me reaching up for Mayfair and Forum and all that. And there was a Janus magazine there. And it had a picture of a schoolgirl on the front bending over a chair. And I said to him, being vertically challenged as I am, there's no way I could ever reach the top shelf. I said, would you pass that magazine down to me, please? So he said, yes, my dear. And he said, oh, so does that appeal to you? So I said, yeah, but me whacking, not receiving. And he said, I'm having a private party next Saturday. If you'd like to come along, you're welcome to. And he explained the ground rules. In those days, we policed ourselves. If you did something wrong, someone would say, can we have a word in another room? You either listened or you never got invited anywhere again. It was very, very simple. I thought I'd died and gone to heaven. There were all these men who were begging me to tighten to the wall and beat the bejesus out of them. Yeah! 18 years old, you know. I thought, this is fantastic. I was whacking away for a while. And then this couple came up to me and said, could we have a word? And I thought, oh God. So I went into another room with them and I said, what did I do wrong? And they said, well, you're obviously naturally dominant. You've got a lot of potential, but you're ab absolutely lethal at the moment because you don't know what you're doing. So I said, okay, how do I learn? They said, we would be happy to mentor you, but you have to do things our way and we will teach you the traditional way. Was that a hard process to go through? Oh God. <laughs> People at the end of the eight or nine months where I'd, I wasn't allowed to hit anyone, I had to submit and learn lots of different things, physiognomy, psychology, pressure points, nervous system, first aid, the fundamentals behind being a dominant or a submissive, uh, your responsibilities, the roles, everything else, ad nauseum. By the end of that, people used to go, oh God, and walk out the room if they saw us coming because all of us would be growling they were frustrated that I wouldn't submit. I was frustrated I couldn't submit. And yeah, it made for some fun arguments, I have to say. <laughs> if you hadn't had that ch chance meeting mm -hmm. in the corner shop, what do you think would have happened? I dread to think. I'd like to think that I would somehow have found my way into the scene. But... Whether it would have happened or not, I do not know. I cannot say in all honesty that it would have. I mean, at the time we had sort of exchange in Mart and different places where people advertised. So I like to think that at one point I would have either placed an ad or responded to an ad and got into it, hopefully that way. But who knows? It's quite a scary thought gradually realised over the next year or two that there was actually a niche of people who weren't into BDSM at all. They just wanted CP. They loved role plays. They also loved playing without role plays. Um, it was just an inherent need and it seemed to be a slightly different mindset on some levels than BDSM in as much as CP is more based on reality. It happened to a lot of us when we were younger. Um, if it didn't happen to us, it happened to someone we knew. Uh, we used to laugh at them quite often. It hit lots of notes for me. And so I started researching more into discipline and 
corporal punishment and found that that's what really attracted me. What do you view as the main differences between BDSM and corporal punishment? <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, they're differences, but they're similarities at the same time. It's a very grey area, but BDSM, on the whole, not completely, nothing I say is concrete, BDSM is more based on fantasy, on master and slave, uh, dominant and submissive. It requires someone to actually fully submit. Whether that's in reality or in mindset, that's the premise behind it. Corporal punishment is based more on things that either did or could happen to us when we were younger. And it's more to do with discipline, self-discipline, mental discipline, as well as corporal punishment, spankings and canings and things. Does that mean that the most people you see are a little bit older? No, not necessarily. It's, to me, any kink or fetish is the way our brain is wired, the same as if we were dyslexic or whatever. We have an inherent need for it in one form or another. That's what makes it fun. Everyone's different. This is the nature versus nurture theory. If it were just nurture, how come so many youngsters are also into being spanked and caned and carrying out spankings, canings and all the rest of it? They still love to play schools. A lot of us do because some of us never grow up. Has the internet made the experience of getting on the scene better? <laughs> Do you really want me to answer that? Yeah, go on. Oh dear. <laughs> I think it's been fantastic in allowing many, many people all over the world to realise they are not the only freak. They are not alone. There are hundreds, thousands, if not millions of people who have similar or the same kinks, needs, fetishes, whatever you want to call it. However, it also allowed a lot of creepy things to slither out from under their stones. You've got a lot of people now who think that they can be and say whoever and whatever they want from the anonymity of their keyboard. Have you been in Al Summers? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it was horrible. One of my first visits to Anne Summers was the Soho branch many years ago, and it was on two floors. And what was different about it was if you went upstairs, they actually had real cuffs and stuff. It wasn't your uh, bamboo cane that's going to break after five minutes. It was proper stuff. And I actually spanked <laughs> as a young member of staff. Um, one of these cocky young kids. Yes, love, what can I do? <sighs> Wrong person. I said to him, well, you can bend over so I can try this cane out. He went, what? I said, well, <laughs> try before you buy it. <laughs> and his attitude really annoyed me, so I was enjoying it. And he went... Red, then white, then red again. So I said, well, come on. I said, you want the commission? Bend over. And in the end, he did. I only gave him a little tap. Enough that he really felt it, but still a tap. <laughs> and Summers, what people have to understand, they are primarily a sex shop. They are not fetish shops. So they deal with vanillas who want to spice up their sex lives. It's great because it's a reasonably priced way for people to be introduced into things like bondage. But um, it gives people who want to experiment a way to do it. But if you're going to then go on and become seriously into the scene, whatever your scene may be, you have to invest in proper equipment and you have to invest in learning. Look at the Fifty Shades of Grey nonsense. Now, I won't criticise anything unless I've read it. 
It made Dan Brown read like Charles Dickens. The whole premise was rubbish. Some of the information in the books, <laughs> stop laughing. <laughs> but it caught on because so many people want something to spice up their terminally boring sex lives. Let's face it, every creature on the planet has sex in one form or another. Great that people are experimenting. It's given a lot of women the confidence to come forward and be more assertive and say, I want to try this. What do you think the dangers of approaching this without a good base of knowledge is? Physical dangers. You can cause serious harm to someone. You get these idiots who want to put a rope or a, a collar around someone's neck and then tie it up high. And they'll leave them like that for an hour. Things can go wrong. So everybody who wants to try this has a responsibility to themselves and anyone they want to play with to learn. Learn the basics, learn the basic safety, what you can and can't do. Take, for instance, a cane. If you hit someone across the base of the spine, you can shatter a vertebra. If you hit them higher, which does happen, on the kidneys, you can rupture a kidney. Do you really want to take it so lightly that you could potentially permanently damage or kill someone for the sake of reading a few books or what going to some courses or whatever? I love to teach people and I give demonstrations and workshops to help people um, with all aspects of CP, especially and including spanking, implements, caning. I've always wanted to write a book, always. It's always been an ambition of mine. And when I realised how much dross is out there and how much rubbish that people are <laughs> having inflicted on them as, you know, professional information, I thought, well, I can help more people by writing books. First book that I've written is The Art of Corporal Punishment. It's a handbook, apparently, so people have said. Gets people interested, gets them to know more about themselves, their motivations, what they need. But it also applies to people who are more experienced. The other book is The ABC of Discipline. I tried to make it different. How many CP books talk about wit and wisdom of Winnie the Pooh? I've been told it's entertaining, but also contains a lot of information that people either weren't aware of or wanted a bit more clarification on. So it's serious but fun at the same time. My notes on caning. These form the basis of my demonstrations and workshops. There will be something in there for the more experienced that they didn't know. Also, by the time the newbies have finished reading them, they can stand up and they can go and cane someone. Otherwise, <laughs> and you won't like, oh shit, I'll race through it. <laughs>